um, quite stabilized uh, because uh, uh, we need uh, the, the purpose of this work was to use liposomes to be vehicle and adjuvant for bivenol. But uh, uh, differently of you, I uh, at this time, Uh, the intention was to develop one uh, resistance of the, the organism, one... Uh, <laughs> one tolerance. Because the big you go... I don't know if you have some of them, but you did for one... Uh, be one day, but it's terrible. And uh, the quantity of venom is not important. And uh, neither the number of uh, uh, bites. For the people, for those people that are allergic, only one bite is enough to kill you. <laughs> and uh, the re reactions are terrible, you know, for those that are allergic. I'm allergic person, and so I was very interested in developing this formulation. One, one person is allergic, uh, one of, uh, this person was is injected with the venom, uh, they develop one uh, cellular response where the venom is linked to the IgG at the cell surface. And so the, the person was, uh, when this same person is injected with the aller allergen, so they form one cross-linked um, B venom and IgG, and this start the problem. And uh, the worst of the problem is anaphylaxis and death. So we need one the new strategies to improve the treatment of uh, desensitization, because the treatment, the traditional treatment, can take uh, years, two, three five years to desensitization one person that is allergic to be venom. We proposed that not our formulation was to encapsulate the B venom within liposome. This is one pattern. What's the problem? What word problem, technological problem? The presence of PL, PLA2, phospholipase, and melitin both present in the whole venom. This protein, this uh, melatonin is not one enzyme, it's one peptide, but the phospholipase, the substrate for phospholipase is phospholipid. So we tried to uh, modify chemically the melatonin. The melatonin is 50% of the whole venom composition. And we did one, uh, the melatonin form the pore in membrane. So, uh, and the phospholipase hydrolyzed the membrane phospholipid. The first tool of our development idea was to do one alkylation in the phospholipase active center by using parabromophenacyl bromide and these alkylations did in, in the estrogen residues and the alkylated venom is uh, not able to interact with membranes, not able to uh, induce the lysis, but it, it is interact, you will see. Well, uh, And the other action we use to uh, the melting peptide don't have a 
doesn't have easily in their residue. So we we'll use another chemical uh, to modify the residue of No. <laughs> we use another chemical uh, substance to um, abolish the membrane or formation induced by humidity. And uh, we use another uh, tool that was to put the parabrom penicillin bromide inside the phospholipid membrane because the parabrom penicillin bromide is uh, hydrophobic. So we will use this capacity, this uh, homology of uh, uh, solubility, and we put together the phospholipid and the parabrom penicillin bromide in the membrane of uh, the lysosome. So uh, we obtain one venom, modified venom, where the medicine was inactivated, the phospholipase was inactivated, and the membrane, uh, the liposomal membrane, was um, stronger to impeach to be um, uh, damaging for some PL, PLT uh, residue. Well, um, to characterize this venom, this uh, the whole B venom, we use of uh, circular dichroisma, roller sets, and other uh, analytical methods, physical methods to, to, to say that uh, uh, this was modified and why uh, these whole proteins are impeached to interact with the membrane or to lose the membrane. Because they, they are inactivated, but uh, the protein, the whole protein, was more hydrophobic, more disorganized. I mean, with organization, uh, the second and third level of organization. It means that the protein was less uh, firm, uh, the alpha X uh, was broken, and uh, the uh, hydrophobic residue was exposed to the medium, and so we could follow the interaction of the venom with the ligosome. Uh, we, as we, yes, they interact, but this interaction is not um, strong to destroy the membrane, so we didn't observe links. How you measure the lead, membrane, membrane lead, membrane lead. Um, by using um, a mask, yeah? and uh, so you could, uh, okay. Thank you. So this was the, the modification of humility. We observed that the membrane was less structured by CV and by UV, measuring uh, the exposition of uh, hydrophobic residues. And uh, we saw this also by CD and by fluorescence. And we follow also the interaction of the membrane and uh, the whole protein by circular dipole. But this venom was unable to induce membrane fusion, membrane aggregation, and uh, leak out. So we um, uh, obtained 
one stable formulation. Okay. One stable formulation. And uh, here <laughs> uh, we observe uh, the direct evidence that the protein and uh, liposome interaction was followed by confocal uh, death. Tem aqui, o Sara cá ou aqui? Aqui. Aqui vai, aqui. Ok. Se não se vai assaltar. Então, vocês. Sorry. Uh, and uh, we observed, we, uh, in one channel with GOA, we can see there uh, the disintegration of liposome. And uh, at the left. In the middle, the protein of venom was uh, with Alex, Alexa C33, and uh, together with one saw, with the confocal microscopy, we can see. I don't know if you see, but I see a, a strong, a big liposome with smaller liposomes inside. This means that one a uh, one uh, uh, disintegration and the the liposome uh, englobes the smaller liposomes, we can uh, translate this, this uh, instability, instability and uh, uh, destruction. Here, when we put together the medicine and the whole venom with GOA, we follow the lipid, uh, it's not good, but we can see here the liposome membrane. Here with Alexa, we see that uh, the whole venom interacts, interacts with the membrane because it's red. And when we see together, we see, we can observe that this Alexa membrane, this uh, protein uh, with Alexa, is in the same pla place that the lipos liposome. So, yeah, so uh, we're, we're starting to run out of time, otherwise okay. And here, we observe it also by freeze fracture destruction, if we don't <coughs> use PVB, and the only situation where the membrane remains absolutely um, Stable, it's there where we use the whole B venom uh, modified and in the presence of membrane containing PBB. We concluded that our formulation was stable and we use one, this is the, the venom imm immunotherapy shadow when they did one sensitization and uh, followed by different formulations, smaller and smaller in time, and one challenge. We observed the formation of IgG when you inject the free venom, uh, or modified venom, in the other formulation we uh, observe the, the formation of IgG, that is free venom, free venom inside the liposome, and free B venom without modification. And here, that is the best result, is the total uh, uh, absence of uh, the formation IgE. So we obtain it uh, as we design it, one stable formulation that abolish the formation of IgE. And uh, the signal of uh, toxicity in the mice was abolished too, as you can see. Here is the experimental uh, mice with the stable formulation, and there the mice treated with the traditional immunotherapy, venom immunotherapy. 
here is to say thank you to Tati. Tatiana was my student of master and uh, she developed all of this uh, work. I'd like to say thank you to the <laughs>